In this episode, a migraine sufferer's attempt to rest on a plane leads to an unexpected confrontation. Prepare for a tense tale of travel woes and unexpected accusations. But first, am I the butthole for not inviting my ex-best friend to my wedding, even though I was the maid of honor at hers? Posted by Throwaway1, 1047 U1, 102,985. I, 31-year-old female, had a friend Maria, 31-year-old female, growing up. We met when we were about 8 or 9 and quickly became best friends. We started slowly growing apart in high school as our schedules changed and almost completely lost touch during college. By the time we were age 23, we only saw each other once a year at Christmas for our old friend group's Christmas dinner. Maria got engaged to her high school sweetheart and asked me to be her maid of honor in the wedding. At the time she asked me, we had not seen or spoken to each other in almost two years, so it honestly shocked me when she asked, but I agreed. She asked me about a year before the wedding, and after she asked me to be maid of honor, she did not speak to me again for six months. I had taken it to mean maybe she wanted to rekindle our friendship and reached out a few times during those six months to meet up for lunch or hang out, but she never responded. When she finally texted me, it was to meet up with her and her best friend, one of the bridesmaids, to pick out the dresses for the bridal party. She showed up three hours late. Apparently, she and her friend decided to meet up for lunch and to hang out before meeting me at the mall, completely ignoring our agreed-upon time and the fact that I had already said I was there and waiting for them. I am not going to go into details of the next six months leading up to the wedding, but that should give you an idea of how it went. By the time the wedding day came, I genuinely felt so used and disrespected. On the day of the wedding, Maria was just mean. I waited until the speeches and the first dance were over, then I left the reception and went home. I have not spoken to her since. It's been about four years since her wedding and I am now engaged and getting married in two months. I did not invite Maria or any of our old friend group. In my mind, our friendship is well and truly dead. Apparently, Maria ran into my sister at a store and were chatting and my sister mentioned the wedding. Maria texted me, honestly shocked she still has my number, to send me her address so I knew where to send her invitation and I just responded thank you, but the guest list is already set, have a nice day. She told the friend group and now they're all blowing up my phone about inviting them for old time's sake, and that I owe at least Maria an invitation because I was her maid of honor. They've been posting on social media and now even my mom is getting involved, saying I should invite them all just to keep the peace and out of respect for our old friendship. My argument is that I haven't spoken to them in years, and I don't care about this wedding etiquette thing, and I don't owe her an invitation just because I was her maid of honor, especially considering everything that happened with her wedding. But literally only my fiance is on my side so am i the butthole so what do you think share your thoughts in the comments below it's unfortunate that a friend's disrespectful behavior towards the op during her wedding can now result in pressure for an unwanted invitation to another wedding the idea of keeping the peace or old time's sake should not override respect and consideration for the op's feelings age 1004 commented not the butthole keeping the peace means starting a war in yourself Prioritize your peace. You don't want them there. And there's no reason to pay 50 a plate for old time's sake. Weddings are an event meant to be attended by those who live and support you. They don't meet either one of those qualifications. A comment from LC78. Not the butthole you don't owe anyone an invitation, let alone people you haven't spoken to in four years, and don't consider a friend anymore. Your wedding isn't a function about keeping the peace. This is your special day, where the people you and your fiancé love most gather to show their support of your marriage. Don't invite them. It's not reciprocal just because you were in hers. Am I the butthole for trying to sleep on a plane? Posted by Latimont 4780. I was on a flight today and started having a migraine. I put down my tray table and rested my head on it. Then the person in front of me suddenly tried to recline her seat and it must have met with some resistance from my head. I don't know if it fully reclined or not, but a few minutes later she slammed it back and this time it hit my head. Not hard enough to hurt, but hard enough to startle me out of my sleep. I sat bolt upright. She turned around and looked at me and said something which I assumed was an apology, but I couldn't hear because the plane was loud. I scooted back further in the tray to avoid another direct hit, which I didn't think would impact her ability to recline and resumed nursing my migraine. As I was getting off the plane, she was waiting in the jet bridge for me and said you were in butthole for holding up the seat. I said, I wasn't holding up the seat, I was just trying to rest. And she repeated her assertion that I was in butthole. I said I was really confused and was just trying to sleep and walked off saying, nope, butthole. Eighth? It's unfortunate that a simple misunderstanding between passengers led to such an unpleasant exchange. 
It would have been more productive for both parties to communicate clearly and respectfully instead of labeling each other as buttholes. E. Pencilium commented. And H turned not the butthole, because she confronted you after landing. You both were just trying to be comfortable, and it's the airline's industry fault that we're all cramped like sardines in the plane, and that confrontational attitude from her was totally unnecessary. A comment from Carla thinks. What kind of precious poodle stalks someone after a flight to berate them for something that a mature adult could resolve in a normal conversation? Not the butthole. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Am I the butthole for not associating with my mother's new family? Posted by Few Juggernaut 319. My mom, 52-year-old female, had an affair seven years ago. My father, 54-year-old male, was devastated and they divorced and mom went and lived with her affair partner and got pregnant. My father was a broken man. He is a sweet and great guy, but he is sensitive. Before he was always happy, bubbly and he was a wonderful and joyful man, but after he became so depressed. He tried so hard to hide it from me, but I could still hear him cry at night and he stopped with his hobbies. Basically, he was severely depressed. It took him years of work to get through the betrayal and he is finally doing better. Well, after the divorce, I, 21-year-old male, decided to just live with my father. We were closer than me and my mom and I were just so angry with my mother for hurting someone I care about so deeply so much. Her choosing to go stay with her affair partner and have his baby I felt was her not owning up to her mistake, it was a light continuous insult. I went no contact after she had her baby and did not speak to her for four years, but she continuously tried to get in contact with me. After four years I started seeing my mother again, we usually go and eat at a restaurant, on the terms I never had to hear anything about her new family, and that worked. But recently she has started to bring up her family and especially me meeting her affair child, cause apparently he has been asking for me. I shut that down quickly with my mother and told her I would go no contact if I tried to push it. Well now my maternal grandparents are telling me I should reconsider. I even got a call from my mom's affair partner but I hung up on him after some well chosen words from my side. Now I have no desire to meet either the affair baby or affair partner and if I did, I think it would look like I support that relationship and that child's existence, which I don't. My terms were clear when I started contact with my mother again and honestly this is a hill I am willing to unalive on. So Reddit am I the butthole? It's understandable for the OP to have strong feelings towards his mother's infidelity and subsequent actions, but it's important to consider the potential impact on other family members and the possibility of healing relationships in the future. Euthanasia 63 commented, You are an adult, and you can associate or not with anybody you want. And your mama or her parents don't have any say in it, and it sucks for them if they disagree. Not the butthole. Secret Double 9239 commented, not the butthole she gave your number to her affair partner after you explicitly told her you want nothing to do with her new family. In my opinion the role of a parent is to teach wrong from right and consequences to actions. If your mom taught you that cheating was bad then don't feel guilty about cutting her out of your life. Am I the butthole for not making an exception for my stepmom to visit me after the birth of my baby? Posted by Shy Lightly Sin. I, 28 year old female, gave birth to my second child almost a week ago. I decided not to have anyone visit while recovering in the hospital this time, while I did with my first. My reason for making this decision was how bad I feel after giving birth. The first time I didn't expect to struggle so much, and it was very uncomfortable having more people around me who wanted to ask questions, talk and be in my space, while I was feeling like unalive warmed over. My husband had to ask his parents and my dad and stepmom to leave after our first because he could see I was not doing well at all. This time we agreed early that we would wait until baby and I got home to bring our families in. We told our families this during my pregnancy so nobody showed up and became disappointed when they couldn't get in. It made things smoother after delivery this time, though I did feel like crap still. It just didn't hit me as bad. My stepmom wanted to be the exception to this. She said every daughter needs their mom with them during this and moms can be much more support than husbands after delivery. I told her no exceptions would be made for her. But she did not believe this and she showed up after my son was born anyway. The nurses would not let her see us because I had said we were not allowing visitors. She called my husband and wanted to speak to me. He told her I was recovering and did not want to see anyone. This led to her crying to my husband that she wanted to see us, and it wasn't fair because most new moms want to see their own mom. She brought this up when we did see our families a couple of days ago. She told me it was a major hurt for her and made her question our relationship and that she realized I would never accept her as my mom and I would never love her that much and she said it hurt her so much because she's been my mom for 21 years now. 
She said she truly only saw me as her daughter and not her stepdaughter, and to realize being a mom didn't even change how I feel about her was tough. She had always expected that would happen. She told me she felt I was unfair. That she was always happy to be my other or second mom, but to not count as a mom at all, and to not be who I wanted around for comfort was crappy for her. She told me she felt I should be more considerate and respectful of her feelings and my decision was made with the intention of making her aware she is not wanted. Which she claimed was very unfair. She has been my stepmom since I was seven and my mom unalived when I was six. My parents were separated for two years when my mom unalived. Stepmom always wanted to be more than stepmom, but I never saw her as mom bonus mom second mom. She holds a very different place in my life and I don't think as much of her as she does of me. I do not feel like I need to see her as my mom to be respectful or kind. But she disagrees, mostly because of how long she has been my stepmom. Am I the butthole? It's important for individuals to respect each other's boundaries and wishes during sensitive times like postpartum recovery. The stepmom's insistence on visiting despite being asked not to may have caused unnecessary emotional distress. A comment from Own Kangaroo 6931. Not the butthole. It makes no difference if she was your bio mom or your stepmom, you still had a rule of nobody in the room, so her argument is irrelevant. Don't let her make this about her not being your real mom or some crap, that doesn't matter at all. What matters is that you, a woman giving birth, said no visitors. End of. You all can hash out the family issues some other time, but for now the statement was clear. No visitors, and she's trying to circumvent this by making it all about her. Just ignore her and don't respond. OP answered. It'll always come back to the real mom thing, sadly. That's how she sees it. A lot of stuff always comes back to that for her. That if I had my mom here, she'd be doing it, or she would be the exception. And it's exhausting but also just brings a fresh wave of my mom isn't here. I miss my mom, and it sucks. Am I the butthole for forcing my husband to get therapy? Posted by Burner Burner 49 year. My husband and I are both in our mid-30s, been together for over 10 years and married for more than 7. For a couple of years I've started my own journey with psychotherapy and have discovered over time that aside from some issues stemming from childhood the majority of time in therapy is spent finding coping mechanisms for my husband's narcissism and childlike behavior. To put things into perspective, up until six months ago, I was the only one paying rent, utilities, groceries, cleaning, and whenever I'd ask him to help with chores, he'd throw a tantrum about how it imposes on his relaxed time and we'd get into fights. We have started couple therapy six months ago after I threatened with moving out. He started disgruntedly pitching in with things, but keeps dismissing any complaint I have in the relationship by denying its validity or openly disputing it. Our therapist has repeatedly suggested to him that individual therapy might help the situation, but he has firmly rejected the need and even accused us both of ganging up on him. I am planning on letting him know during our next session that either he starts therapy or I'm filling for divorce. It's unfortunate that despite repeated suggestions for individual therapy from their therapist, the husband continues to dismiss his role in the relationship dynamics and refuses to take responsibility for his actions. A comment from Aggravating Pain 9249. If your husband is a narcissist, you should be aware that is one of the hardest personality disorders to treat. Also with narcissists getting therapy, they persons also learns the right words, strategies to turn the tables on therapists. The narcissists learn how to spin everything to where they are the victim. OP answered. He's already the perpetual victim. None of our friends actually know our financial situation, and the way in which he paints it when I am not around to clarify things all of his male friends are convinced he's the typical victim of a nagging wife, and some even go as far as pointing out whenever I have new things close that I'm a big spender. And because I don't have the energy anymore for the fight afterwards of you shamed me in front of my friends, I don't even clarify to them anymore that all I have I actually buy myself. Am I the butthole for calling my friend a junkie? Posted by Think Syllabub 7055. I, 22-year-old female, have been friends with this girl, 23-year-old female, let's call her friend A, for years. When I first knew her, she was always a delight to be around and she made everything fun, always on adventures, and always having something to share and talk about with everyone. Thing is, friend A has zero control over herself. Whenever she drank, she would do it until she blacked out, every single time, and she would always call me and tell me to come get her, because her other friends wouldn't know what to do in such situations. I took it upon myself to teach her how to drink more responsibly. I would go with her to bars and keep an eye out for her alcohol consumption. And pay her to do once. Up until recently she admitted to me that she smokes plants and I had no issues with that at all. 
The smoking quickly turned into pills, and that's when I started taking issues with it. I would always tell her to be careful, and not take any random pills she finds, or anyone offers to her, and I'd immediately get screamed at, and being called in butthole for trying to control her life. Things escalated quickly, and she went from taking own pill a day, to tenor and she would only hang. And it became a habit for our friend group to always look after her because she would take it too far and end up passing out, or vomiting, or else to the point where most of them started limiting hangouts with her so they wouldn't have to deal with that. A while back I got in a problem with her over money that she owned me, and it wasn't a big amount, but it happened at a time where I can't afford to lose money. We got into a heated argument over text, and I called her a junkie, and I told her that if she continues doing the crap that she's doing she will end up with no friends around to take care of her when things get bad. That's when all hell broke loose and she started calling me names and saying that I am a bad friend and I never had her back, and that I am a two-faced b-word who everyone warned her about. Keep in mind that I know her financial situation is bad, and I would always do my best to help her out, to the point where I'd give her money to pay her bills and get groceries for her and her family, but apparently that wasn't enough and she had to share with one of our mutual friends that she purposely tries to take as much money from me as possible. This whole situation happened months ago and our friend group knew about it, and she even tried to force them to cut me off, to the point where she'd take their phones and block my socials from their accounts and would tell them that they can't be friends with me and her at the same time. I just want to know an outsider's perspective on this because even though it happened a few weeks ago it still confuses me. It's concerning how friend A's behavior towards the OP has shifted from appreciating her support to accusing her of being a bad friend. The situation raises questions about the nature of their friendship and whether it's healthy for either party. Militant Ignorance commented, not the butthole this woman is nuts and will bankrupt anybody who keeps giving her money, which she needs to buy non-legal substances. You are enabling her non-legal substance use. Imagine how bad you will feel if you give her money and then she overdoses or suffers an alcohol-related mishap. OP replied. That's exactly the reason I decided to limit my interactions with her as much as possible before the fight happened. I don't want to live with that guilt but it also saddens me to know that she's completely out of touch with reality. If you want more of this content, Consider subscribing, because we post new Reddit stories every single day. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Have a miavelous day, and see you in the next one.